We are with my friend Carla, who is with Cross Country Mortgage. Carla is a certified divorce lending professional, and we are doing our monthly gathering. And today we wanted to talk a little bit more, since she does have that certified divorce professional, she's got a lot of knowledge in that whole area and helping clients, home sellers, get through the sell of their home as they're going through a divorce or separation. So we wanted to address that because I know as we're approaching the Thanksgiving holiday and then the Christmas holiday, this is pretty heavy on people's hearts that are in these situations. I personally know this two years ago, I was in this situation and it consumes you. And I wanted to just get some information out there to anybody that is considering divorce, thinking about it, and just give you some information as you get through the holidays and thinking about what your next move might be with um, either staying in your home or the sell of your home. So welcome, Carla. Thank you. Thank you. And, you know, um, I mean, I have a personal experience with this as well. Um, and I just know, um, you know, going my divorce was 25 years ago, but when I go back to that time, I remember thinking, you know, when is it, it's just never a good time. Right. And so right. especially, um, when we get close to the holidays like this, I think that's, um, what I see is people kind of put everything on, on halt until we can get through Thanksgiving and Christmas. Right. Um, and I think it's like, it's all emotional, right. You're thinking sure. about, you know, how am I going to spend my holidays, you know, thinking about the separation of the families and so on. And so um, a lot of people kind of, you know, bury this for, you know, the next six weeks or so, um, but they're still thinking and trying to figure out um, what, what is my next, next step, steps. Mm -hmm. right? Like, how do I, yep. how do I start this process then? And I kid you not, Carol, our phone started ringing last year, the week between Christmas and New Year's for divorce consultations. I am not wow. kidding. It was like, I kept telling my team and then sure, it, it happened. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it happened. yeah. So crazy. It yeah. was crazy. Yeah. So for those of you that are, like I said, kind of considering it, you're not sure what your next step is. We just wanted to give you some information and you can reach out to either one of us after this, but hopefully this will provide you just with some information to help you through the next six weeks as you're considering this. So yeah. the first thing I wanted to talk about was the timing of the sell or the move. So market seasonality, for instance, a lot of people think this is probably not the best time of year to sell your house. And if you're new to this whole um, situation, you probably haven't even gotten that far down the road. However, there are people who are putting their houses on the market in the next six weeks. Just from the real estate side, I wanted to let you know that this is usually a slower time of year. And currently, we are still in a seller's market. We're getting closer to being in an equal market, but we're still in a seller's market. So there's still not even enough homes on the market currently for the number of buyers that there are that are looking for houses. So it is actually a good time if that is something that you need to do to go ahead and put your house on the market. So... Let me ask you this question though. So people are talking about just selling during the holidays and if it's wise to um, to do that with a lower inventory and motivated buyers and stuff. Can you talk to us just a little bit about that and like selling before or after the year end? I know neither one of us are tax advisors, but what is the impact on that for like capital gains or taxes and those types of things? What can you tell us yeah. about that? Yeah, so, um, and we're gonna talk about buying too, right? Sure. Okay. So, um, in terms of selling, um, you know, I mean, in terms of capital gains, of course, if you sell, you know, before the end of the year, this gain will go on your next tax filing. Right. Um, if you do in fact have a gain, what I have realized is that people don't really understand, um, the whole gain, what, what, what is a capital gain? When are they subject to a capital gain? Mm. So, um, I mean, by this time, if you've not filed for a divorce, you're not going to get divorced before the end of the year. Um, right. so it really doesn't matter because if you're going to sell the house and you're subject to a gain, um, you will take that gain as, um, both of you will take that gain. And if you sell the house, as a couple, you're going to split that gain anyway, even if okay. you are filing separately in the end. Um, 
So, I mean, that's really, to me, that is zero concern at all. Okay. Um, You know, I think maybe from a realtor's perspective, you could maybe talk more on the sale side. I don't see any issues at all with selling it, you know, other than it's kind of a bummer to have your house on the market during the holidays, like have, you know, people in and out of your house, but right. um, Yeah. So, right. And just to kind of go into that a little bit deeper. um, One of the things too, is that I know a lot of people are like, you know, Christmas, we love decorating for Christmas. And I've always, I mean, I love the Christmas season as well, but it's, I think that for buyers, having all of the lights and the Christmas tree up and everything, I think that really um, helps them feel more at home and more cozy in someone's home as they're coming in with all of the decorations and everything versus like in the middle of the summer. So I do think there is an advantage possibly just to listing at this time of year, just because of all of the decorations and the the ambiance and just, you know, just the mood of everything. So I think that that is an advantage for sure. Yeah. Let me ask you another question. So um, balancing the holidays and traditions, and a lot of people have kids and some people have older kids or younger kids, depending on what stage of life your kids are in. This can also be a huge thing during the holidays for people that are trying to figure out, I don't want to have my kids have to feel like they are going to have two homes and all that kind of thing. So um, with the emotional and the financial stress, what are some things that you think that people can do as far as just helping their kids kind of through this time, whether they're teenagers or young kids, as they're going through, you know, next year's probably not going to look the same as this year, but as we're going through this, this year, and maybe we're both still in the home together, what are some things that you can, um, you can give us some information on just about the feasibility about finances and things like that as they're going through the holiday season. Yeah. I mean, and this comes more from me, Carla, the person than me, Carla, the lender, because there's not really lending sure. things um, here, but I think just, um, you know, ju- I, I mean, just being kind to each other and understanding, you know, I will tell you, like, I'm emotional right now, even thinking about this, because I remember that even though it was long ago, um, I remember that thinking like, oh my gosh, this is our, this is going to be our last Thanksgiving together as a family or our last, you know, Christmas together as a family, you know, like, what are my parents going to think, you know, what are, what is my whole family going to think? How are my kids going to handle this? Um, And just thinking into, you know, the next year and what that was going to look like, right? Because you're Mm -hmm. sitting there at the table knowing that this isn't going to be like this next year. Right. Um, So just, you know, um, because the two of you probably know, right? Right. Um, It's not going to be like this. And so just holding space for each other, like Mm -hmm. being adults about it and being kind to each other. That's good. Um, I mean, honestly, that's just that's the biggest thing that comes to mind for me. Yeah. I think that's totally true. And like you said, a lot of people will go through, you've you've told me this before that people will go through the holidays and it won't even, it kind of might be on their mind, but they won't really have made that decision until post holidays, because a lot of people are just trying to suck it up (laughs) get yeah. through the holidays, get through all the family stuff, because there's a lot of family interactions and all of that yeah. during this time. But there are some things that you can do as you're starting to think about it, as far as um, starting to plan. And one of those things is to reach out to somebody like Carla, who is a certified divorce lending professional, who can talk to you about you know, how long you need to have certain income and things like that as you're going to be looking maybe for a separate place to live down the road. So, I mean, Carol, it is, it constantly blows my mind. I actually had a a call this morning um, with a guy who was referred to me over a year ago. Um, His, his realtor referred him to me over a year ago. He literally just set up his call with me today. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I had a nice call with him this morning And it's crazy to me the amount of work he has done in his mind, the time he has spent trying to figure this out without 
knowing what is even possible from right. a lending perspective. I right. mean, it this has been going on for over a year. He's been trying to figure out um, this divorce is going to be very drawn out because there's a lot of nuances to it. Um, but I said, you know what you really need to do is like, I, I calmed him. We talked through a lot of options and some right. scenarios, just some different things to think about for him. And I said, I need you to do a loan application. I need to understand where you're at. You need to understand where you're at so that when your attorneys are negotiating or when you're negotiating with your attorneys over the next 60 days, his next court date is in January. Um, you know what you can and can't do. Right. You know, like, I mean, he was talking about, he was talking about selling the house and um, getting into a rental and having his landlord allow him to renovate the rental so that he could create a separate entrance so he could rent it out to someone else to help him pay. I mean, I was like, what are you doing? Wow. Hold on. Yeah. Hold on. Like, let's, let's get some facts first of all. Right. right? right. So yeah. So just, um, making some of these phone calls and I understand it is a very emotional time during the holidays. Mm -hmm. And that's probably why I don't get these phone calls until after Christmas. <laughs> Sure. And that's totally understandable. But yeah, again, I having been new to this just a few years ago too, I had no idea of all of the resources that were actually available. I mean, I had to seek them yeah. out. They weren't just like, but once I started exploring, I found that there was a lot of resources. I yeah. mean, even like some mom groups that I could I could connect with that would help me just help navigate this, even with my grown children. And yeah, so yeah. So there are a lot of resources. People just need to reach out and Carla and I both can, can guide you in those, in those Absolutely. avenues, as far as getting you resources for sure. Yep. So um, another one I wanted to talk about was um, let's see here. So qualifying for a new loan. So once boys, one spouse may need to qualify for a mortgage on their own, and that could delay or complicate the plans for the whole divorce or whatever. So um, if one party keeps the home, refinancing to remove the other person on the loan may be necessary. Talk to talk us through just a little bit about that and what that might look like if they are planning on having to get two separate homes. Maybe one person stays in the home versus selling the home, but someone is going to have to move out and get a second place. So talk yeah. to us about qualifying for new loans and what are some of the things that we need to be aware of in that? Yeah. So first of all, um, this I think is like a really, um, first, okay. So if, if you're, if you are at that point where you know that you're getting ready to file for divorce, or maybe you've already filed, um, and here we are in the holidays and it is really hard, um, to be in the same house all together, you know, during right. this whole time. And one of you knows for sure, for certain that you are going to move out um, and you do plan on being, you know, staying close to the neighborhood or wherever, um, instead of moving out and getting into a rental situation, we can get you right into a home most of the time. Mm -hmm. If you guys are anywhere close to being amicable, we can figure this out so okay. that you can buy a home before your divorce is actually final. And that's oh. the biggest thing that people don't understand. And most attorneys don't know that either. So most attorneys will tell their clients, well, you have to wait until after your final divorce decree before you can buy something. And that's mm. not, that's not true. It's not true. Now there's a lot that leads <laughs> up to that, 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 will allow us to help you buy a home prior to your final divorce. We do have to have the separation agreement hammered out um, because okay. as lenders, we need to know, like you might be receiving maintenance or child support right. or you might be paying it. Right. So yeah. we have to figure that out in your debt to income ratio. Um, we can do things like have the marital home awarded to the spouse that is intending to stay in the home, mm -hmm. or maybe you're not even intending on keeping the home. Maybe you are going to sell the home, but in the interim, we can award that mortgage payment to the spouse that's staying in the home for now, even though their intent will be to sell it down the road. But we can get that mortgage payment off of your balance sheet right. by simply awarding it to the other spouse, right? Um, so there's a lot of different things that we can do in terms yeah. of qualifying. We can do that with debt too. Okay. So, um, yeah. And so 
that's where I think now is a really good time. Um, like the, the man that I spoke to this morning, um, th that would be ideal for them because they should not be living in the same house together during this divorce process. And they are, yeah. um, and it's really unfortunate for the children. So, um, if it's possible to make something happen like this, mm -hmm. um, we do this all day long. And that is what I really take pride in is getting these couples kind of moved on. Um, and, and out of that, it's a really toxic environment. Right. Um, even if they're amicable, it's not a great environment. Obviously you're getting divorced for a reason, mm -hmm. right? Yep. So yeah. So yeah, if we can get them moved on, the qualifying piece, Carol, is different for everybody. So I don't want to really speak yeah. about specifics. Um, it's really like you got to call. You have to call me. Right. Um, and we can I can run through some numbers um, and spout some stuff off over the phone, but it won't be very accurate until we actually have an application in place. And then we can really, really be intentional about mm -hmm. how you are planning on moving forward. And and then the ball's in your court, and you can make some decisions. You can make decisions right. instead of being told, right? Exactly. But you're armed with, okay, I know what I'm doing. I know, you know, what's in my column, what's in their column. And yeah, yep. it's much easier for you to move forward with, with those things. Totally. In place. Yep. <clears throat> yes. So we are actually going to jump back on next month and we're going to go through a few more of these questions as we um, have passed Thanksgiving and go into the Christmas holiday. But I just wanted to um, thank Carla for being on today with us and chatting with us. It is very stressful if you are going through any kind of emotional turmoil, such as divorce or death during the holidays. So please reach out. There are a lot of resources. You can reach out to yeah. Carla or to myself, and we would be happy to um, plug you into some of those resources. So thank you so much, Carla. Thank you. Thanks, Carol.